Hey, Channel 9, as we speak, big announcements are being made at Mobile World Congress regarding Windows Phone. Uh, and standing with me are two guys you're going to get to know very well in Channel 9's ongoing coverage uh, of all the announcements uh, from now for through Mix to the release date. Uh, this is Joe Belfiore and Charlie Kindle. Uh, Charlie, why don't you describe what your role will be here? So I'm responsible for the app platform and developer experience for Windows Phone 7. Okay. And uh, um, I'm going to be over the next six, nine months, year. We're going to get to know you time. really well. Right. We're going to have a bunch of videos with you coming up. Um, but today, Joe, you're going to give us a demo. Describe what your role is with Windows Phone. Uh, I run the program management team that does the design and the spec for the product. And you, you actually came from Zune, correct? So you've got a, a long history in yeah. sort of leading design Yeah, Yeah, well, I, I worked on Zune before that, Media Center, before that Windows. <laughs> uh, so I've done a lot of so UI stuff at Microsoft. Well, I, I, I try. Okay. <laughs> All right, Joe, there's been a lot of news in the press, a lot of rumors milling about. I want to hear it right from the source. Let's set the record straight. What's different with this release? Um, well, I think the main thing that's different is the team has changed its mentality and attitude about who we're really focused on when we build it. Okay. And in the past, you know, when you think about Windows Mobile, um, I think the team was focused on trying to build a great platform for third parties to build lots and lots of different products, really with more of a business end user in mind. Mm -hmm. With Windows Phone 7 series, we've totally changed our approach. We're really, really focused on end users. Okay. And not just business users, like regular people who have full lives. They want to be entertained. <laughs> they want to get some work done. So does that mean like a lot of apps? It means a lot of things. It okay. means that uh, one of the things we've done is work closely with the hardware companies to make sure that the hardware is all really great. Yeah. We have this hardware spec that requires things like a GPS and requires a touch screen and requires a big screen. Keyboards are optional. So the min bar is rather high then. The min bar is quite high. Excellent. And the idea is we want the Windows Phone brand to really mean a great experience. So you walk into a store and say, well, I'm not sure which phone I want, but I want a Windows phone. And that's going to mean a great hardware experience. It's going to mean a ton of killer apps. Yeah. And it's going to mean a lot of stuff that's built in, ranging from Zune for music and video to Xbox for games to Outlook and Word and Excel. So you get a really complete, excellent experience. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed it's got a very Zune-like interface. Well, there are definitely things in the phone that are Zune-like. But the way we like to think of it, there's a, a new visual design we codename Metro. Okay. And Metro actually has its roots in Windows, actually. Uh, Media Center on Windows was the first place that we did this typographically intense high motion UI. Yeah. Then it moved to Zune. The, the recent Xbox dashboard has a little hint of Metro in it. Okay. And now you'll see it on Windows Phone. We want all those products to feel like a family, um, to be not just useful, but also really fun. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's take a look. All right. All right, Joe. So what you've got here is a prototype, right, for the Windows Phone 7 series that will be coming out later this year? That's right. I'll and there will be hardware from a lot of different manufacturers, but the prototype I have here is a good example of what the hardware will, will be like. But this is this is the software. This is Windows Phone 7 series That's right. operating system. That's right. right. So well, let's walk through it. So what you see here, this is the, the lock screen. And down below, you see our three main hardware buttons, uh -huh. Start, Search, and Back. Um, and we're designing the UI to really go with those. The UI is also entirely designed for touch. We require capacitive touch, so you have really nice, smooth touch. You saw me just unlock the phone there. Yep. And what we're looking at here is the Start menu. And so I'm going to pan up and down. You see these are called tiles. And these tiles give me up-to-date information about all the things I care most about. So obviously, I can get to my phone. I can get to all the people that I care about. We'll talk about that later. I can send texts, email. My calendar shows me detail about where I'm supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And if you look farther down, you can see I've customized this one a little bit. I have, that's the me tile. That's my actual Facebook profile. And that's my wife, Christina. That's her yeah. actual Facebook profile photo. And these animate so that you get real live data coming from those people. This is the Games Hub, featuring Xbox Live, the Pictures Hub, Music and Video Hub, and those are customized to show people and things that I care about. Um, but let's start by looking at the browser. I'm going to jump to Favorites and okay. choose Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And so now we're going out to the web. We're on the cell network here. And you can watch the page load and render. So you get really great uh, web page compatibility. Um, and because we support capacitive touch, of course it. we support all these kinds of features that users are expecting today, like pinch zoom, double tap to zoom in. And one of the things I want to show, too, if I zoom in really close here, you see the letters look very nice. Mm -hmm. That is sub-pixel positioning for text in HTML, one of the things that makes 
text really readable on this very large, beautiful uh, WVGA screen. It's very high resolution, higher resolution than what you're seeing on most phones today. I can click a link, navigate into a page, you get the idea. Yeah. The, the browser works the way you'd expect. And there are some really neat features in the browser on the phone as well. We recognize phone numbers and addresses in any HTML, and they become touchable. So you can touch a phone number, and it'll help you oh, dial really? a phone. You can touch an address, and it'll take you somewhere on the map. Um, I can hit the tab button, and you'll see here the browser supports multiple tabs. So it's easy for me to Excellent. have one page loading Excellent. in the background while I'm reading another. Uh, those kinds of scenarios make you more efficient when you're using the phone. That gives you a quick look at the browser. Um, let's move on. I'm gonna, there. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna jump back to the Start menu, and uh, let's talk about some communication scenarios. Okay. So, for example, um, I mentioned this People tab. Yep. When you think about communicating, there's so many different ways that people communicate today. They might text, they might phone call, they might email, or they might social network. And we've tried to pull together all the people that you care about in one place called the People Hub. So when I navigate here, you'll see the first thing it shows is people that I've been communicating with recently. And I can pan over. Um, and I see here's all of my people. And what this is doing is aggregating your Exchange contacts, your Gmail contacts, your wow. Facebook friends all together. This is actually, I have 600 plus friends on Facebook, and you see these are them with their photos and so on. And then over here on the far right is the What's New feed. Mm -hmm. And that's information about all your people coming from all your social networks. So these are my real Facebook friends and what they're up to right now. Um, I can click the plus to comment and so on. Um, and the idea of the People Hub and all these other hubs is to bring together all the relevant stuff about a particular topic. Yeah. In the case of people, it's sourcing from lots of different services and giving you social networking. In the case of photos or music, it's third-party apps, people, what they're up to. Um, one other thing that's kind of cool that we've tried to do, I mentioned the buttons in hardware, is the search button. When I'm in people and I press search, search gives me a fast and easy way to filter my people list. So if I type a W, it's going to filter down to all the people whose last names start with W, and I can choose somebody from the list. Mm -hmm. It's fast and easy. Um, the idea of search being contextual doesn't apply just to people but to other places as well. If I come back to the start menu and hit search, Search optimizes around being a web search because there's right. a ton of things that people want to do with their phone device while they're out and about. They want to look up a phone number. They want to look up a uh, place to eat and so on. So here I am on my phone. Um, the phone recognizes that I'm in Redmond. And search tries to be contextual and decide based on your query whether it should give you a local result or a web result. Perfect. I typed pizza. I get a map. I get results for pizza that's near me. You can see there's that's a great. Pizza Hut 0.83 miles away. Um, if I want to get more information about this, I can touch it. Um, Bing is providing all this detail. I can see um, directions. I can get the phone number. I can jump to their website. I could pan over and read reviews. Excellent. You know, you've heard about Bing as a decision engine. The Bing team is aggregating together data from lots of different sources to help people make decisions. Restaurant reviews are a good example. Some of this great. data comes from Yelp. Does it have similar Yelp. functionality for movies? It does, it actually. Knows where you are. Absolutely, it does. And one of the other nice things you can do is hit nearby, and it'll show you parking, ATMs, gas stations, things that are near the place that you just did a search on. In fact, you asked about movies, so let's try, a, let's try an example. Um, there are a bunch of data types that the Bing engine... I was going to say Avatar. The Bing <laughs> engine tries to be smart about. Movies are one example where it gives you an instant answer. Really prevent people from having to type a lot. When I type Avatar, it knows my location. That's great. And it tells me the actual theaters and times for me to go see Avatar right now. Yeah, so it knew you were talking about a movie. It could have very well brought up an Xbox Live Avatar page. That's right. For your, That's your, right. your, your it, gaming icon. It figured icon. it out. That's and here's, right. here's another interesting example. Smart. You see, in this case, it picked web by default. But it could have picked local. Uh -huh. I don't know if there's any local businesses near here called Avatar. Look, there are. If I pivot over to local, there they are. <laughs> and I can find my way on the map and so on. So that's search. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about communications. Um, I mentioned email. There's a very full, complete implementation. But what I can do is jump to email, and you'll see here um, this is an Exchange email account. We support Exchange, but also Hotmail, Windows Live, Gmail, mm -hmm. Yahoo, all the popular mail formats. And it's really easy to set up. I can pivot between messages and look at just my unread. I can look at messages that I have flagged. I can look at messages that are urgent. Uh, but in general, the performance is really good, and our implementation of ActiveSync works against a local cache, so it's always very responsive. Mm -hmm. You can delete messages. You can open messages. And you never see an annoying loading, loading, loading.